and give him praise. We're still continuing with our orientation with the 2022-23 masterclass. And we are going to go on again to the introduction and also to the orientation time. Father, we thank you this evening. We give you praise and we thank you for all your children. We thank you for everyone who is coming into the 2022-23 masterclass. We know the expectations are huge. We're all looking forward to what you will do with us, all the teaching and the equipping. Precious Father, even as we are getting um, the orientation we pray you get our hearts ready and prepared for what you will do in yeshua's name amen and amen so this evening we continue with the orientation for the 2022-23 master class and for those of us who are not in the class or you finished or you've come to it um, here all these are all for us we are reminding ourselves um, what it takes to serve the Lord and what the Lord expects us and what we will be expecting. So this evening we just want to do a brief introduction leading to the um, the course outline of what you will be doing in my session which is um, the foundation and what Jesus said and did. So in, to introduce us into that we have to know that the Lord who created each and every one of us knows us more than we do. He knows what we can do, what we're capable of doing, and has endowed every one of us with special gifts. Special. So no one's gift is more special than the others. Whatever the Lord has blessed you with is bespoke and then is the best. So having that in mind, the ministry calls for faithfulness. So whatever the Lord had called you to do is all about faithfulness. In Hebrews 3, 1 to 2, we are for holy brethren, particulars of the heavenly callings, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. This is it. So we are expected during this time and after to the rest of our lives to be faithful. Amen. Also to know that what we are being called into is a high calling. It's not an ordinary calling. Um, those who are just born again, just warming the pews, doing their daily um, Christian life at the ordinary level, that's okay. But once you're called into ministry, once you recognize that, look, um, there's something that the Lord has put into me that I need to put into action. I need to start exercising. Is a high calling. That's why Paul said in Philippians 3 14 and 15 I press toward the mark of the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus let us therefore as many as be perfect be those minded and if in anything ye be otherwise minded God shall reveal even this unto you so is a prize of high calling it's not an ordinary thing so don't handle it with levity carelessness less a fair attitude just brace up to what we are going to be doing and then be happy for the lord to use you and we also want to remind ourselves that ministry calls for total commitment total there's no two ways about it very jesus said in matthew 6 24 and he said to his disciples if any man will come after me let him deny himself take up his cross and follow me deny yourself the self in you okay the you in you had to be put aside then take up your cross what it takes cross is not easy um it's not foam and it's not plastic it's still heavy heavy trunk of wood to be carried so so many things will come and jesus says if you're not happy to take up that cross which eventually leads everyone to the to be crucified in the flesh to let go of certain things that will not profit and follow him and then in Luke 9, 20, 
three he just added another thing in there he says and he said to them all if any man will come after me let him deny himself take up his cross daily now matthew did not ask daily did not add daily but look added daily so it's a daily affair so it's not a one-off thing it's not something you do for one week or what some days and the other days you are not in it serving the lord is a daily affairs and that's it and also we no need to follow him do it the jesus way if we have to it must be his way no two ways about it no compromise no order and then he also told us in matthew chapter 10 from verse 37 to 39 this time around it has to in include explicitly denying mother father and then son daughter anyone who if you will value those things more than yeshua then the person is not worthy does it mean we leave our parents, our brothers and sisters, don't talk to them? No, there are so many things that come along with those that can hinder us, especially if it's been so much indulged in your family and then you can follow them. There are so many things families are known for. Some families are known for jesting, some for drinking, some for good things, not all or bad things, but some for self-righteousness. But he says, unless you leave those things those things that made you who you are you grew up in liking being part of it the excuses we might give with family ties unless we leave them we, we, we will not be worthy of him serving the Lord requires zeal very strong zeal no lukewarmness not remember what he said to the Ephesian church in Revelation chapter 3 he said they are neither hot nor cold I will spew you out so we it requires zeal John 2 17 this is the fire <coughs> we carry into the kingdom he says that and his disciples remembered that it was written the zeal of the house had eaten me up when he came in and saw people treading in the house of the lord this time around um you're going to see a lot of things so you've seen them why you're being trained and equipped and activated and being released is so that all those treading that is happening in the house of the lord that ought not to be will be moved away the lord will use you to clear them out so it requires the romans 12 11 says not slothful in business but fervent in the spirit serving the lord amen seal act choose you as you get these words you need to move out first corinthians 9 16 and um, paul said therefore though i preach the gospel i have nothing to glory of for necessity is laid on me yea woe is me if i preach not the gospel so in any way whether by prayers or by reaching out or by um um using um, the media or the internet or virtue it whatsoever this is the time to deploy all paul says woe is me if i don't go about the gospel at 2024 um he also said there but none of these things move me in other count i my life there unto myself so that i might finish my course with joy the zeal yes you will come across so many things that will require self-sacrifice you will you will you have to it's not like anyone pushes you but because the zeal of the lord is in you uh, you won't even know when you do it because jesus comes first amen you live for him day after day hallelujah and it's all about him and what he wants you to do amen psalm 27 4 describes it much better he says there one thing have i desired of the lord that's david talking that we that will i seek after that i may dwell in the house of the lord all the days of my life and to behold the beauty of the lord and to inquire in his temple hallelujah that's the kind of zeal we're talking about to be in his presence at all time rejoicing 
blessing and his glory being on you look at david he says one thing i desire is that that will i seek after so you seek after it you go for it with all your heart and what is all dwelling in the house of the lord dwelling in his presence dwelling in his word dwelling in his commandments dwelling in the things he wants us to do amen hallelujah and then Paul also talked about it here in first Galatians chapter 1 verse 16 he says to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the hidden immediately I confer not with flesh and blood so most of the things you're going to hear is not something you call anyone on the phone you go straight to do what the Lord is saying hallelujah you go straight go do it the zeal will move you the zeal because the harvest is right there's so much to do in the kingdom so much so don't mind all those who think it's all about them if they don't do it no one else please pastors listening to me empower the people of god to move and do empower them the harvest is truly right the laborers are few so don't stand in the way of elohim don't do all the things. Everything is just you, just you. The Lord has given gifts to all men. Empower them, train them, show them, mentor them into becoming what the Lord had created them for. There's so much, so much to reach. So much to do. Anyway, so in Luke 9, 20, 67, sorry, the 62, Luke 9, 62, and Jesus said unto him, no man having put his hand on the plow looking back is what is fit for the kingdom of God. So there's no looking back. Hallelujah. We've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. It's forward ever, backwards never. Hallelujah. We've laid our hands on the plow. There's no going back again. We won't go back to servitude in Egypt. We won't go back to onion and the cucumbers again and the melons. We are going for the land flowing with milk and uh, honey. Dear four brethren, 2 Corinthians 7, 11 says, For behold, the same, same thing that ye sorrowed after your godly sought. What carefulness. So ministry calls for carefulness. It wrought in you. Yeah. What clearing of yourself. You have to be careful. You don't meddle with sin. You don't meddle with um, unbelief. You don't meddle with Satan. You don't meddle with compromise. And he says, what clearing of yourself. Like Paul says, hearing do I exercise myself to be void of offense towards God and towards man. So you make sure that you preaching to others, you will not be a castaway. Yet what indignation, yea, what fear, yea, what vehement desire, yea, what zeal, yea, what revenge. In all things, you have approved yourself to be clear in these matters. So you do, first of all, you deal with yourself first that's why we're going to look at the building blocks the foundational doctrines so that we want to get it right first so um in the kingdom what does it constitute fire in the bone to run the race wow amen so that's that's it there's no other way because Moses ran and faced pharaoh he did it gideon destroyed the gideon uh, um, um, the amalekites esther is saying if i perish i perish as we said in the morning goliath um, david confronted goliath elijah elisha and a lot peter we can go on to talk about them you'll be prepared amen so by the time we are finishing you'll be prepared really to start start on the race so but know it that god knows our disposition he knows um somebody may be saying oh no does it tell all these all the zeal all the commitment and all these things but i'm walking if i don't walk i don't get money to pay my bills to pay my uh, mortgage oh i've got my children i need to look after them oh is the lord still calling me yeah 
so many things you might say oh you are married you've got a job you need to do this is he unmindful and making these demands on us no god is not unmindful he knows what you can do the thing there is that our concept of ministry is not the what the bible says where we got that we don't know but somebody just come formulated ministry to only mean pulpit just pulpit or if you're not a pastor you are not in ministry no in your place of work you are the priest of that place what stops you from declaring the word as you're coming back on the train meeting people as you go on shopping is all ministry during when you come back and then relax and you're calling people on the phone to follow them up is all ministry you are cleaning the church on saturdays you go early make sure everywhere is clean and you've tidied up. it's ministry ministry as we said it in this commission is expression of what you are impressed with with the expression of what God has impressed you with so the Lord knows and that's why he gave when we are going to look at the parable of the talent he gave one five gave one two gave one one according to several abilities as the Bible said it so is when we leave out what the Lord has given to us to do other things then it will be heavy and we can't carry it but if you run in the lane that the Lord has kept to you you will see that his yoke is easy and his burden is light he's not unmindful um, of our labor of love so we cannot give any excuse is about moderation and uh, wisdom as the bible says let our moderation be known to all men the lord is at hand so ministry is all about all of you carried in a whole the time you start separating them you get into trouble so you have a family you have husband and the children ministry is all about them they are your first parishioners. They are your Jerusalem. Raising children in a godly way is not an easy thing. It's not. It takes prayers, talking with them, singing with them, dancing with them. It's a full-time ministry. You get yourself into things that you wouldn't ordinarily have learned just to make sure that you pass it on to the children. You go along with them. You pray with them. The time you start separating them, you it will not work. But you know that when you're going, you go with them. Put them by your side. Hold them by the hands. When you're praying, they are there. You let them pray. When it's time for family Bible study, you wait. You read the Bible. I give them chance, each and every one of them, to explain. What did you learn? What is the Lord saying? What do you think this um, passage is talking about? They are your first parishioners. It's amazing hearing these children. You know, when I look back to him and when they were much younger, to hear them saying what they thought that particular scripture is saying is amazing. So those who neglect the children and you don't bring them up, oh, you're just denying the church. Huge thing. You'll be so shocked what we come out from these children. From their perspective, the way they see the scriptures is amazing. So carry them along. And when you carry them along, it fits well. And then they grow into it at the same time. And you at work. Wow. Take Jesus to work. There are so many colleagues who are facing so many problems. They can't even talk to anybody. They don't know who to trust. They, they're depressed. They are being beaten by the enemy, black and blue, no hope. If they find you a cheerful person, an accommodating person, they will pour out their heart to you and you can throw out the lifeline. So it's ministry, whether you're in the marketplace or on the pulpit, it's the same thing. So don't separate anything. You're traveling to business, carry Jesus along to your business colleagues when you're there at your board meetings and discussing and things get so tough and they're looking to uh, make a decision the lord will give you the wisdom to bring forth something that will sort out the organizations and you give the god glory next time they will look up to you the lord will use you so christianity is total so on the train going to walk anywhere the lord will give you the wisdom you show for christ in every manner 
both in speech and in conduct in the community spreading and speaking to as many about Christ at home making your home a base for hospitality in the neighborhood greeting them smiling giving them um, just a wave something happened um, last some few weeks ago about two weeks ago apostle and i were doing a prayer walk and there's someone we've been trying over the years to even break through and smile but now so this fateful day something fell out of their car and the wind carried it and it brought it away we kept walking when i got there i picked up that thing and then i went back to get it opened the door oh the thank you was so much the smile was so much since then the wave has started brethren let's not be wary in well doing anywhere you find yourself your attitude your character your demeanor your converse everything what makes you you who should depict the gospel amen so anywhere friendship associations bearing in mind also that that's what we were called so in the church showing and provoking others to good works how does it work plan them as one and knowing who should be doing it so be a proper sister or brother at church so the only problem why people find it difficult is not knowing what belongs to Caesar and what belongs to God. Or bad enough, trying to combine the two, it will not work. Don't combine the two. Example is in Matthew 17, 24 to 25. And then, um, and when they come to Capernaum and yet receive the tribute money, and then Peter says, oh, do you think the master should pay? He says, nah. Jesus said, no. No, Peter, we have to. Please do your civic duties. It's very important that we have to. So he answered and said unto them in Mark 6, 37, give them to eat. So this time around, manage your time. When you come along with us, most of the um, our teachings, um, the highest is 45 minutes. It doesn't get there. It's between 30 minutes, sometimes 25, few of them, but the average is 32 minutes. So you can come along. It's easy to listen when you're going to work, coming back or home. So it's not like it's so tedious and then once you're listening you're writing what you have got from there that's all it's not like it's a big exam that we need to put you through three hours and then lock you up and vigilate you and all those is what did you get we want to make sure that you are not in the class for being in the class we want to make sure that you are taking in something you understand what we are doing so very quickly, I will run the um, the curriculum my side. Apostle will be doing his during the week, and then we might not. We can only do as much as um, what we can carry this time. Bearing in mind that he is thirty nine different models, and then those who use the name courses, if it's in your um, your living the country where they use. Um, and call them costs for us here is models whatever you use his is 39 and mine is 21 so you can see it's quite a lot there's no way we can finish that in um, one master class in one year because it's supposed to span out for three and a half years even further than that so the Lord has been helping us to see how we can streamline our curriculum which we've not done before just for the benefit of those coming into master class and also for the churches who are taking up the training and for individuals who are training so that you know when you're coming in, into a class this is what you will be having and then if you finish the level one and you want to carry on with the level two of course we I experience that being that almost 80% of those who finish carry on because that's a lot and then the more as we go in the more we go the sweeter it becomes uh, most of our principal officers have been with us for 
10 years, 12 years, they are still listening. Uh, may the Lord help us. So we take it, we're going to look at the foundation blocks. They are the fundamental doctrines of the faith. Well, no, it's not like um, this is exhaustive. It's quite a lot. But for the purpose of this training, we're going to look at one, what about the repentance? Why would we do with repentance? Oh, these are ministers coming in. These are, they've been born again for 35 years. They're overseers. We don't want to take anything for granted. Not at all. A lot of people had come to us. And then we found out halfway through the training that these people don't know what salvation is. They don't know what repentance. And worse still, we've got a few of them till the end of the of the training and we're now asking them can you share your testimony how you gave your life to the lord and they had none so the story is just from one church to the other the church will not get you being born again john 3 and um, verse 3 jesus made it clear to nicodemus yes you're a pharisee you know all the laws of moses and you're out there in the tabernacle and the synagogue and then in um, Pride, uh, priding yourself of knowing everything, but I need to tell you one thing except you be born again you can't enter into the kingdom of God. So we're going to look at that I'm sure if some of us will say, wow what does that mean? I'm interested right, come along with us um, we're going to talk about what baptism and then what it is so it's not a question of just grabbing people put them in water or sprinkle water on their faces which makes no meaning or just be, use it as a, a membership drive people comes to church you baptize them people need to know why they are being baptized and the significance and the why amen we'll look at that then we will look at restitution we need to restore justification so that Satan doesn't tell you that oh, no, no way Christ can forgive you. We will know that being justified in him, we are sons. Um, we're going to look at that teaching and we are going to look at an important one. Holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. There's no need carrying on in ministry with the wrong heart because it's all about the heart. Because the heart is the heart of the matter. Um, if it is not pure, uh, you're not going to do anything that will be pure. Because it says to the pure, all things will be pure. So if you will do the work of the Lord in deception, in unrighteousness, you won't go far. So why is it important? It's important because that's the state we will come and the Lord will use us. We're going to look at the Holy Communion. Very important. We had one today. And then the beginning and the significance taking us back to what Jesus did for us is the foundation and the bedrock of you know the Christian faith and the Bible says as, uh, as much as you do this remember me what are we remembering everything from the prophecy to the birth to his cross and taking away our sin to the authority given to us and coming back as the king remember me everything so we're going to look at one accord being in one accord and then the holy ghost baptism we're going to talk about most of the fake things and errors that the present church has put around the gift of the holy spirit the holy ghost baptism apostle will be teaching on the gift but i will be teaching on the holy spirit um the um acts chapter 2 receiving it proper and dealing with that and from there we look at the trinity why will we look at the trinity a lot of people who say they are christians they go to church but they don't believe in god the father god the son god the holy spirit and there are many offshoots of this erroneous doctrine of non-trinitarians that today we worship with them we associate with them we fellowship with them and we wonder why they're doing what they're doing is because of their foundation 
they don't believe that Jesus is God himself even after talking and you wonder do they really have the book of John in their Bible to read about the divinity of our Lord well we're going to look at that and then the resurrection so from there we move on to he taught them saying he taught them Matthew 5 6 7 there's quite a lot in there quite a lot it's a huge um, it takes almost um, up to three four months to finish but we are going to have some to do in at the first level and some part of it will do at the second level and then the third part of it we will look at the third level and the reason being that there's quite a lot to cover Jesus spent time all through red letter words Matthew 5 6 and 7 each verse is a huge um, lesson and then a huge discourse on itself so there's no need to rush them we carry on to look at all of them um, the poor in heart the meek um, those who hunger and thirst the messful, the pure in heart, the peacemakers, the persecuted, the salt and the light, the law fulfilled, the least in the kingdom, critical take three critical take hits, how to pray, where to lay our treasure, singleness of eyes, no two masters. And the second section for those who will continue would be take no thought, mm, the main thing, judge not. The beam before the moat, the dog and the swine, axe, sick, knock. And then what you want men to do to you, the two gates, beware of the force. It's all about God's will. I never knew you, the wise and the foolish man. It's all huge, huge, huge. And it's quite very interesting in ministry to know about that. The same will happen to the miracles, quite a lot of them. There's no need to rush them. So we're also going to take them at level one and level two and also level three. And what is it about the miracles that will be different in this class? Brethren, when we start looking at the miracles and the parables, you will know the danger of religion. I mean, that's one key thing of the danger of religion. You are go, you are going to scream out because most of these miracles we've seen them in a particular way because we've been taught in a particular way, and everybody carried on and gave them and just keep building on what someone had said. No one has taken time to say, "Hang on, the Bible is in front of me. What I have in my hand, the Bible is saying more to it." As we keep, my husband and I keep looking at this, we were screaming. All our years, our Christian life has been taught in a particular way. One single thing. Once he's given that name, that's what it is. So before you go in, you're already blanketed with preconceived notion of what you think it is. So you are not seeing again all the things. So we're going to see in these miracles, why did Jesus choose these people? this particular 37 when the bible says in john 21 25 that if those things which he did were to be recorded the word itself could not contain it as a book which means there were hundreds of thousands of what he did so why did he pick out why did he allow the disciples to only talk about 37 something is huge about them so people just come to seek miracle i want this i want this but the reason and why we should build their faith if they just plug in into those things so what did satan do took them away so people are chasing shadows you don't need anyone all you need is as you're reading one plug in exercise the faith it is done so we're going to look at number one there is no wine wow i'm so interested in that one is so wonderful the teaching of what the lord brought out there is huge at thy word thy son leave it all of them these men are peculiar 
some of them he chose them because of who they are some of them are because they can give thanks at the end of their miracle because some people will never say thank you so what the lord is teaching us is if you are someone who could say thank you favor will come to you miracles will come to you you will be appreciated it will remain sometimes he takes some out to take them away from the noise and the distractions and the things that will not allow their faith to latch on to he, to him, he will take them out. Some of them, he showed us how to be importunate, how to cry out. Some of them are wisdom and some of them are the uncommon miracles. You know, that the unconventional ones telling us that it doesn't have to be in a particular way that things have to happen. Just leave yourself open to what God will do. It can come in an unconventional way. So there's so many things we will pick out from these miracles, which all my years as a Christian, I've not had anybody pick them up. And I'm like, what? What? No. So come along as we look at them. You yourself will see that this Bible is huge. It is rich. Every word means a lot, not to talk of a sentence. The wisdom in it is so much. So when we look at these, we are going to see, um, for example, there is no wine. It may not be wine. Every disappointment, you can latch on your faith. That message built my faith so strongly that these are one of people wonder what, what is it that, you know, uh, makes her is nothing the word. Amen. I die word. That's it. So I've come to the point where I say to the Lord, I die word. That's it. Thy son leave it. Mm. It's okay. Doesn't matter who is crying or not. It shall be so. And I've learned to say to the Lord, speak the word. I don't need any drama. I don't need to be pushed down. I don't need to sow anything. Speak the word anywhere you are. And then I know you are not too far. A hey, peace be still. There's so much to learn from there. The one of the two blind men is absolutely fantastic. All of those men. The others have their eyes. So and they're telling them to keep quiet. Keep what? No way. Keep screaming until the Lord. So sometimes you don't have to listen to people or the way they think or the way the society had framed it oh this is the norm you can't go out of this no sometimes we go out of our way to get our blessing amen so there's another course here called men of special duties amen and that's the first one we've finished now it's so amazing men of special duties who are these men of special duties that Jesus chose, specially handpicked to usher him into the into the world, just as you and I are specially handpicked now to bring him back again, to welcome him back at his return. So we're going to look at the life of Zechariah and Elizabeth, Mary, Joseph, Simeon, Anna, and John the Baptist, not the way the religion have taught them not at all we're going to look at their profile we're going to study in depth that's huge in those just in those two chapters a lot anyway come along let's carry on and the one of Matt, mary and um john the baptist and joseph every young person every young person should be able to know what made them and who they are hallelujah so after that we're going to um i'm not saying we would do all i'm just giving you an overview of what it entails and the things um i teach um, in the master class the next one is the 12 member church 12 member church who are these 12 member church hey it will surprise you that jesus pastored a church of 12 people <laughs> 12 people so those of us who are wondering i don't have a thousand i don't have a 20 12 and we're going to look at what he has to deal with so you ask yourself am i really pastoring you can't be a pastor of ten thousand people and you don't know them you are not their shepherd 
So you don't know. You don't need them besides three waters. And for those who run ministry themselves, all by themselves, they don't empower others at um, um, lower level, fellowship level, district level and all those. You're not doing well. We're going to look at what the church, Peter, we look at the life of Peter, very interesting character. 27 times of up and down, doing it well and not doing it well, getting it right, not getting it right. So we're going to look at the profile of Peter. We're going to see why um, Peter failed and then Peter after the Pentecost. Interesting. Come along. It's not about Peter anymore. It's now about us. So as we're looking at it, look at yourself. Then we look at the life of John, Andrew, and James. Very interesting. Andrew just called his brother um, Peter. And then that's it for him. He disappeared in the scene. As long as he's concerned, he brought his brother Peter. And he's okay. So although Peter, the class prefect, the class monitor, doing all the talking and everything, but it was Andrew that brought him. So... As we said earlier, according to several abilities, the Lord may use you as Barnabas to bring up Paul, and that's all. Brethren, you've done a good job. Anyone who mentored Paul of today has done well. Anyone who will bring in the like of Peter into the kingdom have done well. We're going to look at them. And the James, very interesting. Then we look at Matthew, who, the task collector, the publican who became an apostle. And then we are going to look at where did Thomas go? Generally out there, everybody's notion, oh, once you talk about Thomas, everybody's, oh, he doubted. Is that all? Something made him to doubt something don't forget that thomas was a very nice person very simple at heart tender-hearted in john chapter um 11 when jesus said oh our friend lazarus is dead he was the one that says oh no let's go and die with him so to just condemn him i said something happened he was not there when jesus came and you see we've not picked up all these things we all go oh doubter doubter when actually if you get down to read the lord will expose you know exposit so many things so come on let's see philip and nathaniel trusting people then we look at james the son of alphius thaddeus and simon the canaanite not much is said about them just mentioning their names but they are there so we're going to look at it two ways okay is it that they were quiet still doing the things of the lord as they are commanded no problem anything that's fine we're going to look at that it's okay also going to look at that since not much is being said are they just there passing by do you want to just go not one soul with which to meet the lord not making any impact we're going to look at both and then uh, judas iscariot um again we have another model called the high calling of perfection okay the high calling of perfection is um part of matthew 5 6 and 7 we're going to look at exceeding the religious anger without a cause first reconcile exercising wisdom wow that particular place in john chapter 6 is something else the when the lord opened our eyes we were like wow you will now see the way religion have taught us what it meant and what it is but when you read through the line you could see that what jesus was talking about was wisdom so seeing of the heart better go half don't put away your wife hey at that time please those of us in the western world don't throw stones it's just the, what the word says and let's abide by it swearing turn the other chick give to him that's axe and love your enemies another course coming in will be innovative evangelism and we will take our bearing from john chapter 4 innovative evangelism how jesus did it very interesting he brought in all so many things Amen. You could see the tactical engagement, the true worshippers. If thou knowest, go be call your husband. I've meet to eat. Creativity in soul winning. We're going to look at that. And then when we're doing that, we, we then 
combine it with our evangelism training. Uh, the evangelism training is not just the one oh how to talk to people, smile and everything. When you live in a diverse community, you need to understand the people you are talking to. Most people go ignorantly and they labor and come back with nothing. Why? They have a good heart, but due to ignorance and not understanding and thinking one size fits all, they came back empty handed. We need to know how to properly engage and how to do it. Um, hopefully, um, the Lord will help us. It takes a while to do that, but we can see how it goes. Then life in ministry, mm. we're going to look using Jesus, Yeshua, as an example. We're going to look at Christ, a perfect example. No script, no bread, no money. Hey, had saying. But he's with us. We're going to look at being focused, how he focused, designing the crowd, contamination of all ages, channeling towards perfection, attitude to service, gratitude to the Lord, don't go without me, key things that make life, ponder over this sobriety, without him we can do nothing, cautions to take in ministry, no mixture of old and wine, the diversities of Christ's message, short star, Stop shortage and privileges and reward is quite huge and expansive. So, um, discussing with the director of studies, we can see what this class can take. And then, um, level two miracles are the important man rise up and stand forth, give them to eat, bid me to come, great is thy faith, um, be loose, and the rest of them. So, um we're also going to look at the religious the religious who are they and then um, the oppositions that Christ faced so the religious we are going to look at um, um, having to deal with them trials of faith the oppositions they set the offenses the skeptical the temptations rejection wearied with the journey each and every one of us christ went through all these things that will prepare us and then we're going to talk about the parables under the parables all 34 of them um, we've grouped them um, into um, some subsections according to the subject that Christ used. So we've grouped two, four, six, eight, um, seven of them under the religious where Christ was addressing specifically the religious attitude of the Pharisees and that one had to do with the um, a certain Samaritan, the Pharisees and publican, the two sons, wit and the tear, two debtors, a merciful servant and rebuking, please speaking, seeking, sorry. We're also going to look at another badge which comes into watchfulness and that is the wedding feast, the wise servant and the not the rich fool, the fig tree, and the parable of watchfulness. We're going to see another section, God's father, the father's goodness. And this has to do with the parable of the good shepherd, the friend at midnight, and the unjust judge. And then another section is the fruitfulness. So we're going to look at um, the barren fig tree and then the sower, the parable of the sower. Another section is the kingdom parables, which include the mustard seed, the leaven, the hidden treasure, goodly pearl, drawn it. And we look at another parable of seeking the lost, which has to do with the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the prodigal son. And then we have another one, which is the accountability parables based on accountability and these ones are on and counting the cost the 10 pounds the 10 talents the unjust steward laborers in the vineyard and rich man and lazarus and we have the preparedness 
and the parables those ones are the wicked husband man the ten virgins and the final separation which is the parable of the king's son so i was doing that this afternoon believing the lord to bring and because after teaching this for so many years you can see that some have similar themes and then some look alike and they are just that just as the bible said the kingdom of god is like the kingdom of god is like it is and so we have grouped them for the first time in this master class so um hopefully if it comes up we teach date if not it will be for next year and in this curriculum also we have the leadership and management styles we're looking at jesus styles number one is the his leadership and management how he handled fame and popularity and jesus and the system of this world bottlenecks in ministry the wisdom of christ all these things come up um we come up as a 15th credit hour um um course and then we look at why the cross our response to the cross because you can't talk about all jesus said and did without ending it with why the cross because that's the ultimate that's where everything led to so outside of that we might be fixing some saturday programs and then or some special programs for pastoral training and then um, um teachers training and as i said earlier evangelism and family relationships and then um we carry on and finally we have the sundry teachings all the things standalone ones that christ taught um, all through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So we're going to look at, he knew all men, I was hungry, um, I, the I am of Christ, of this word, fresh commitment, specific instructions of Jesus Christ, take my yoke, and uh, the champions, and the peace series. And then some, he did some specific um, emphasis, like all the verily, verilies, so that we know what to get on so it's quite um you can see you can't teach all these in um one year no way not even in two years not even in three years it takes us at least three and a half years if you start to carry on and considering apostle have got a huge section also to teach but the lord will be with us and see us through let us pray <coughs> father we thank you today and we give you praise for the 2022-23 masterclass everlasting father you've prepared them you've called them be with them your grace is sufficient even as they've taken on lord to answer the call all grace required will be supplied lord as they seek you all other things you will add to them lord we ask you look after them Look after their families, look after their work, look after them as individuals, look after everything they do, keep them healthy, keep them away from the enemy. Lord, let your glory be on them throughout this time and forever as they put their hands on the plow. Lord, they will never look back. Thank you, Father. In Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And